Hi, welcome to Blockholic. In this video, we are going to see what is an IPFS. I just had a thought, why shouldn't I make a small tutorial on IPFS on how it works and how it is different with the current file transfer protocol. In this video, we are going to see what is IPFS and how it works and how to upload a file into IPFS and how to retrieve a files from IPFS. Let's get started. An IPFS is an interplanetary file system. It is a peer-to-peer -peer network for storing and sharing the data in a distributed file system. So let me make this statement into bits and pieces and explain you what it is. So ideally it is a system. It is connected peer-to-peer. -peer. It is a peer-to-peer -peer network. For what? For storing and sharing the data. Where? In a distributed file system so in a single word when i say an ipfs a ipfs is a place where you can store the data at the same time data is not going to be stored at a single place it is going to be st stored in all over the network so the question is how how it is possible right let's see how it works so here you can see the current server based system and the other one is peer to peer network. If you take the current protocol here what happens in the server based system all the data is stored in the centralized server. What would be the probability for having the data for a lifetime of any system? It's zero because if the server gets crashed or if the data in the server goes for a task obviously you cannot retrieve the data isn't it? But if you see the peer-to-peer -peer network, so the, all the networks, the computers in the network, whoever is connected, everybody will have the data of your file. So the next question, is it secured? Yes, of course it is secured. Because none of the computer or none of the node will have the full data. It is strange, right? So let me explain you a little further. So what is the current file protocol, file transfer protocol? It is HTTP. We have been listening this all this year for the past 20 years. It is HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So that is HTTP. So what is the issues with the HTTP? Files are stored at a single server. So what will happen if there is a crash in the server? You're going to lose your whole data. And next, expensive bandwidth cost. So if you are using an internet to upload the files and download the files, it costs money right at the same time it there is a lot of duplication let's say I want to store some data you know I put the data in Google Drive and then I will also put the data in one drive so when you have a single file why do you want to store it in a two different places yes that is true obviously because if there is a issue with the Google Drive you can get the backup from one drive or if there is an issue with the one drive you get the backup from the google drive so you are actually trying to secure data and you are ideally you are duplicating it but in ipfs you are not going to do that anymore and again infrastructure cost when you want to store the data in a server you need to build an infrastructure you need to build a computer which can store the data and the lifetime of your data in a HTTP server is ideally a short term lifespan. Let's say you have a website today, maybe after 10, 10 years it may not be there. Or there is a website which exists in 10 years ago and it is not there now. You know, it happens. What is the advantages of IPFS? So here, whatever the data you put it into the IPFS, the data is stored in the form of address. Hey, it sounds so strange, right? So the data in HTTP is stored with a URL. So you'll type something like uh, drive.google.com slash some data. There you can find your information. If there is a broke in the link, what will happen? You cannot find the data. But here in IPFS, we are not going to work with the links, hyperlinks or URLs anymore every content will have an address that is a cryptographic hash so with that hash you can be able to retrieve the data 
and there is no way of duplication the data we'll see how the duplication is going to be avoided in the next video for now just remember that there won't be possibility of any duplication at the same time tamper proof that means nobody can tamper your data nobody can edit or modify or do any kind of a things to your data because it's your data and you have a complete control on it these are the best examples of ipfs do you remember in the earlier days we used to download the movies in bittorrent on mu torrent that time probably you might be uh, listening the words like you know there are so many peers the movie is getting downloaded fast uh, there are less peers the movie is not getting fast downloading fast right so the peers whatever the peers we are talking about these are the nodes which we are calling now so the peer and the nor node is one and the same that's all for this video in the next video we'll see that's all for this video see you in the next video thanks for watching